Good afternoon. Welcome to the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan. My name is Patrick Zoll and I'm the East Asia correspondent of the Swiss newspaper Neue Zürcher Zeitung. Um, just to make sure before I forget it, turn off your mobile phones or just make sure in some way they don't disturb us uh, for the next one and a half hours. We have a very timely um, discussion today um, about uh, the discussions between North Korea and Japan on the abduction issue. Actually, uh, at the beginning of last week, I was a little bit afraid uh, that we would come here in vain when I saw the rockets flying again, and I was pretty sure the whole thing would unravel. But we were lucky. Um, things are going on. Some sanctions have been lifted. The commission has been set up. So it's a very good moment to look at this process uh, with two um, specialists today. Um, to my right is uh, Professor uh, Takesada. Um, he's been, he was 36 years with the National Institute of Defense Studies and he's a fluent Korean speaker and has been teaching uh, two years ago, or three years ago, at Yonsei University in Korea. Um, he's published extensively on Korean issues. And to my far right is Sebastian Maslov. Uh, he's a, your, um, your title is a researcher. Research fellow, I'm sorry, research fellow at uh, the German Institute for Japanese Studies here in uh, Tokyo. And he holds also teaching uh, positions at Fukushima University and Tohoku Gakuin University. Um, he's focusing on, in his studies on Japanese North Korean relations. Um, they both give us, will give us a short introduction. Uh, Sebastian goes first. He gives us a little overview, overlook. And uh, Professor uh, Takesada then will fill in a number of details, a number of points. So please, Sebastian. Yeah, th thank you very much for the uh, kind introduction and thank you very much um, for letting me here uh, speak in front of this very distinguished audience. It's indeed the first time that I speak in front of a spotlight, um, which hasn't been the case uh, for most of my academic career. Um, so as uh, Patrick has mentioned, I will give you a short overview over the recent events, that is the events that have left to the Stockholm Agreement. Um, and without further ado, since I don't only have 10 minutes, um, I will um, jump right into the, the topic. Um, so as most of you know, um, this is the background against which the current um, development has evolved. Um, what you can see is a recent, uh, or at least for the last decade, uh, a survey conducted by the cabinet office of which, of which issues matter most in Japan's North Korea relations. And it's not surprising that over the last decade, the abduction issue has always been on top of Japan's uh, foreign policy agenda towards North Korea. And only the nuclear uh, issue and the missile issues have come uh, in second and third, uh, and fluctuated uh, with each missile and, and nuclear test. But in comparison, the abduction issue has been a constant, a constant uh, issue uh, throughout the last 10 years on Japan's North Korea uh, policy agenda. And so it's not surprised that in 2002, uh, the Japanese government has tried to solve the abduction issue, and Koizumi has traveled to Pyongyang. Uh, they have signed, they have signed the, the Pyongyang Declaration, laying out a roadmap for normalizing Japan-North Korea relations. Um, at that point, though, however, the Japanese government has, uh, at least this is the common reading, uh, miscalculated the backlash, the public backlash that the revelation and acknowledgement of the abduction issue by North Korea would cause in Japan. So the abduction issue uh, has unleashed a very influential, powerful domestic movement within Japan that has kept the issue uh, constantly on the agenda. So let us look at the recent developments. Um, before I came into office uh, in 2012 for the second time and after, 
As most of you know, uh, I'm sure, uh, with the death of Kim Jong-il in December 2011, um, Japan, at this time the Democratic Party of Japan government, was very quick in embracing this opportunity to reopen uh, dialogue with North Korea. So uh, Japan was indeed the first government, even before Washington, um, that um, acknowledged and expressed its um, um, uh, or announced its, uh, its wishes towards uh, North Korea, acknowledging the death of Kim Jong-il, and were then forced to uh, withdraw those um, uh, statements, saying that those are personal opinions, then by the cabinet secretary, uh, Fujimura Osamu. Um, but after the, the uh, Kim Jong-un regime has emerged and consolidated uh, throughout the last uh, two years, um, the DPJ has tried to uh, reopen and to resume working level uh, talks with, with the North in August 2012. Um, that actually led to the, to the mentioning and to the negotiation of the repatriation of those uh, remains of Japanese who have died uh, before and after 1945. So this, were, this was the start uh, of what we have seen uh, now. And so these talks were resumed later on then as senior level talks between the DPJ government uh, and the North uh, and were then uh, uh, convened in November 2012 in Ulaanbaatar, uh, which has led to some hope uh, in Japan that these talks will uh, consolidate and result in, in, in a serious round of uh, of normalization talks. However, uh, as we all know, only one day later, uh, uh, the uh, Noda government announced the uh, um, uh, end of uh, the government and the uh, um, and snap elections in December, uh, which have been uh, uh, held uh, against the background of North Korean missile tests in December that have resulted in the hold of talks with the North. So in came Abe 2.0 in December 2012. Um, and Abe was very quick in resuming and embracing North Korea and the momentum. What is not very well known though is that uh, during Abe 1.0, that is Abe's first administration, Abe was indeed eager to uh, resume dialogue, uh, although he appears to the public as being very hawkish on North Korea, which is um, uh, the result of his hawkish stance during uh, the 2002, 2003, 2004 talks and his pressure uh, towards uh, sanctions and a tough policy line. Abe was uh, the prime minister who um, embraced talks with North Korea in 2007, in August indeed, in Ulaanbaatar, approaching North Korea saying that Japan will acknowledge the history issue to set it on the agenda uh, and to resume talks. So this was Abe's stance in 2007. And those, those talks faltered very quick um, in August and September due to Abe's uh, sudden um, uh, withdrawal from his office uh, and the uh, high frequency of prime ministers that came in after Abe. So um, there's, the one thing is to say that those talks with North Korea are complicated due to North Korean uh, provocations, but on the other side, Japan's political instability has also led to a uh, resumption uh, or to a hold of talks during the last year. So these two things come together. North Korean provocations and Japan's political instability have both been important factors that have led to the infrequency of talks between those sides. So what has then happened uh, after Abe came in um, is this um, a series of talks, informal and formal, uh, that have been held um, since October 2013 um, with the dispatch of uh, Abe's close advisor and former Koizumi um, uh, Secretary uh, Ijima Isao, who has been in a constant contact with North Korean uh, officials, with whom we don't know, but he is meeting them first uh, in uh, 2013 in May with his dispatch to Pyongyang, an event that has not led to success but to embarrassment since uh, North Korea has used this as a uh, PR stunt. Uh, nevertheless, uh, Abe has uh, continued to embrace North Korea uh, with his dispatch in 2013 of uh, Ijima um, to uh, Dalian, where he held talks with North Korean officials, um, and which uh, indicated in the eyes of some observers a shift of the Abe government towards, uh, from a pressure, uh, a containment uh, policy towards what some call a humanitarian diplomacy towards North Korea. That means, uh, Abe has included uh, issues of the, uh, the repatriation of Japanese remains, 
uh, on the agenda and the acknowledgement um, of um, the abduction issue. So we see the emergence of humanitarian diplomacy very early on in the Abe government. Um, later on, then informal talks were continued. We had um, uh, talks at the sidelines of the Red Cross Society in Shenyang uh, in, January, in, in March. Before that, we had informal talks uh, in Hanoi and Hong Kong. So you can see that the, the, the momentum was building up pretty early on uh, uh, in, uh, in, in the Abe government. Um, and a uh, most remarkable event was then the a negotiation, um, which we assume may have happened uh, during uh, uh, Ijima's dispatch and talks with North Korea, and then the later informal talks of the meeting uh, between the Yokota uh, parents, uh, that means the parents of Yokota Megami, with their granddaughter uh, Kim Jong Un in Ulaanbaatar in early March. So this has then um, been proof of a sufficient level of confidence between those governments against which they could held uh, official talks uh, later on in, in March in Beijing. And at this, at this event, um, the, the agreement to hold um, official talks in, in Stockholm uh, was reached, and those talks were held in, in May, as all of you know, I suppose. So the May talks then have uh, produced what Professor Takisada will describe later on in more detail, the Stockholm Agreement. The Stockholm Agreement does not compare to the Pyongyang Declaration. Uh, this must be said, since the Stockholm Agreement is more or less a, a humanitarian uh, document that addresses the abduction issue and does not lay out a roadmap to normalization of relations. Uh, it only addresses the precondition for those talks as it addresses uh, the, the abduction issue and lays out Japan's response if this issue will be addressed. So three main uh, items are included in this agreement. The first is the establishment of the Special Investigation Committee, which has been established now, which is now up and running. The Special Investigation Committee consists of uh, 30 members um, and is chaired by a very close um, um, uh, associate of Kim Jong-un, that is uh, Song Tae Ha, uh, who is also a member of the National uh, Defense Commission, and those we may be confident that this um, location of the special committee at the echelon of uh, North Korean institutions may be an indicator for North Korea's seriousness of addressing this issue. So this special investigation commission will address uh, the remains of all Japanese, what this means we will see later on, um, but it expands the agenda beyond the abductions. The second item is then that North Korea will provide, will provide the results of this investigation uh, to Japan. Um, uh, Cabinet Secretary Suga Yoshihide has said that a first uh, uh, report will be received more, most likely at the end of summer, beginning of autumn. Uh, and Japan will then um, scrutinize the results um, on its side. So um, the last item on the agenda is then um, that Japan will launch um, its own investigations uh, scrutinizing, uh, scrutinizing those results and uh, in response to North Korea's move towards establishing this committee will lift sanctions, which it has done so uh, last week with a cabinet decision on July the 4th. What's remarkable with this cabinet decision though, is, as most of you know, is that, Japan hasn't, that North Korea hasn't delivered anything but a promise to investigate. Uh, so Japan is actually delivering a um, coming forward with a policy move that is based on nothing but a promise to investigate. So this is also a sign of uh, uh, confidence on the Japanese side that this investigation will produce some remarkable, uh, some credible results. Okay, so I will keep myself uh, brief here. What is meant with all Japanese? Um, uh, you can see here that is, uh, of course, the, the most important issue of the, of the remaining abduct abductees, of which the Japanese government has confirmed 17 so far, although uh, the National Police Agency and uh, private organizations uh, uh, believe that more than 860 cases are related to North Korea, and those cases are object to investigation. Um, moreover, uh, Japanese spouses who have been uh, repatriated with their Japanese husbands and are living in North Korea, um, that is 1,400, are also object of these investigations, as are people um, who uh, were unable to return to Japan after the events of 1945, which is a number of 8, 000, 1,800. 
and of course the remaining the remains of those uh, who died in North Korea, which we calculate at about 20,000. Okay, so in response to um, the promise of investigating those cases, Japan has lifted, uh, so far has promised to lift uh, three, or has actually lifted three key sanctions, uh, which you can see here being marked red. Um, those are only the sanctions uh, that are imposed unilaterally by Japan on North Korea and do not include the multilateral sanction regime uh, that Japan has joined with other nations under the United Nations sanctions regime. But you can see that uh, the first one uh, uh, is a, uh, a measure that uh, relates to uh, human exchange. And here, uh, Japan has lifted the prohibition of Chongyong officials to re-enter Japan up and traveling to North Korea. Uh, this has been lifted and we can talk about the timing. Um, the timing explains itself because North Korea is actually, as of today, uh, holding an event accommodating uh, the 20th, death, uh, 20th year of the death of Kim, uh, Kim Il-sung and those officials would have liked to travel to Pyongyang to uh, participate in these events. And therefore we can probably uh, speculate that the uh, speediness of lifting those sanctions are related to, to this event. The second uh, 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 sanction that has been lifted uh, relates to uh, financial exchange restrictions and here the amount of uh, money that can be carried on after uh, up and leaving Japan in cash and remittances um, transferred from Japan to North Korea. So these amounts have been uh, pushed back to their uh, previous uh, limit uh, before the sanctions came in in 2009. And the third, of course, the third sanction that's been lifted is a prohibition on entry on Japanese, uh, on uh, North Korean vessels to Japanese ports. Uh, this is important, um, but does not include the uh, Myeongmyeongpyeong passenger ferry that travels between Wonsan and Niigata, uh, but all other vessels, and uh, makes clear that those vessels are only allowed to enter Japan and return to North Korea for humanitarian uh, uh, affairs for humanitarian uh, missions. That means carrying on humanitarian aid, food, goods, uh, but not um, uh, anything else. So these three uh, items are, have been addressed and have been lifted. And I would like, against this background, to uh, discuss very briefly what this, um, what the timing, uh, how the timing and momentum behind these diplomatic uh, developments can be explained. For one, uh, as most of you know, um, Abe's personal commitment to the issue explains a lot. Abe has been very coherent when it comes to the, the abduction issue uh, since his uh, uh, entrance uh, of, into politics in the late 80s. Uh, Abe has been very, very um, outspoken to address this issue. So personal commitment is one thing. The second, uh, the second motivation, and this may, may be a speculation, but it's a speculation that has appeared in the Japanese media, is a balancing of the public agenda. That means addressing uh, the, the abduction in North Korea diplomacy to somehow um, balance the, the public uh, 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 opposition towards its collective self-defense agenda. And this has been addressed uh, and explained in the Asai Shimbun, the Tokyo Shimbun, for instance. Uh, a third motivation might be that, um, and I have uh, uh, written about this in, in several essays, is a decline, a moderate decline in the influence of the abduction lobby in Japan's uh, policy making uh, process. Um, and as I have talked to many of those uh, inside the movement, uh, I have um, come across um, uh, fear, uh, severe um, conflicts between the local level of the movement and the national level of the movement. That means as the abduction issue, uh, the abduction lobby consists of the, of the families and their support groups, uh, particularly the support group. They have boosted more than 100 organizations at the local level since 2002. But many of these local branches of the movement are in fear opposition to what ha what's happening at the national level uh, and the politicization of the, of the abduction issue. So this has been addressed within the movement and has also led to a, uh, a rise of conflict that has automatically resulted in the, uh, in the uh, slight uh, decline of the movement and its influence and what I would call a return of pragmatism in Japan's North Korea foreign policy. Uh, on the North Korean side, um, motivations may include, of course, uh, tensions with, with China and North Korea's um, seeking of alternative uh, resources and sources for uh, trade, humanitarian, and financial aid. 
um, particularly with the uh, rapprochement of China uh, and uh, South Korea. Uh, North Korea is now fearing isolation, and whenever North Korea fears isolation, we have seen in the past, uh, tries to break out uh, by approaching uh, Japan, which has been the case through the, through the 90s and later on. So this might be a pattern here that explains uh, the momentum from the North Korean side. And the second, uh, the third issue from the North Korean side that may explain it is its resolving of the uh, uh, Chongyang issue, that means the General Association of Korean Residents headquarters in Japan, which has been um, uh, sold uh, and North Korea has opposed this, uh, this sale uh, by uh, addressing it in the, uh, uh, in the talks. Uh, indeed, the, the, the sale has been, has been uh, put on hold. Um, which might also be uh, something we have to discuss later on. Okay, um, finally, what, ex what developments can we expect from here on? Um, well, if history is, a, is a, uh, a, uh, a lesson here, then I would, I would suggest that what we see now somehow is, uh, is similar to what we have seen in 2002. That means the events that have led to um, the, the, the uh, Kim uh, Koizumi summit, um, then we would expect that uh, at the sidelines of the upcoming ASEAN Regional Forum uh, in Myanmar, we would expect uh, North Korean, uh, the North Korean foreign minister to speak with the Japanese foreign minister, which is something that has been rumored throughout the last month. Um, uh, 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 then we would also expect that uh, uh, the opening of uh, working sessions um, and an office um, uh, to monitor the investigation process may function as a semi-official public uh, diplomatic channel that may consolidate this uh, uh, process, uh, the current process. Further on, um, the submission and evaluation of, in, of a preliminary investigation report um, is expected to occur, as I've said, in, in autumn, early autumn. Um, and it, uh, it is at this point with the, with the um, uh, submission of the report that the ball will be uh, in Japan's pitch. And that means it's totally up to the Japanese government then to deal with the report, uh, to address this, and to respond in a way that does not compare to the public uh, 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 backlash in 2002. So it's up to Abe to, to, make, um, to, to um, address this and to create the confidence within the Japanese public to accept whatever comes out of the investigations. And finally, and I think Professor Takisada will touch on this in more detail, uh, we will expect that, not that, that the US and, and um, South Korea will increase pressure uh, on Japan to um, more to engage in more policy coordination uh, and to not break out of the multilateral, trilateral uh, uh, process in addressing the North Korean uh, crisis. Um, before I finish this, I, will leave, I would like to show you um, this, um, this uh, uh, statistic. Um, as I've just finished a, a book on, on this issue, what you can see here um, is that the North Korean issue in Japan is not a, North, not a bilateral issue as such, but is embedded in a, a broader discourse on Japan's national security uh, throughout the last decade. Uh, what you can see is, is Japan's response to the North Korean problem on all sides, the abduction issue, missiles, and, uh, and the nuclear program. And you can see that through the 90s, uh, North Korea has not been on, the, on, on Japan's uh, foreign policy agenda. In fact, it hasn't been mentioned uh, in media or uh, debate in the Diet. It has only been since 2002, with the rise of the abduction issue, that North Korea has increased its presence uh, in Japanese media and the public. And I would suggest, as, I, as I'm doing with, with colleagues in this, in this uh, book, which is coming out soon, is that this relates directly to the use of North Korea in changing Japan's national security agenda. And if you read through Abe's uh, books, you can see how Abe is linking North Korea to a narrative of weakness, vulnerability of Japan's post-war regime, and therefore the need to change this post-war regime in order to be to become a strong Japan. So you can see that North Korea has taken on a different, a different role within Japan's uh, uh, national security uh, debate. And this has been proven by uh, the enhanced uh, um, role that North Korea plays within Japan's debate. And with that, I would say I'll leave it uh, uh, here. And thank you for now for your attention. And pass the ball on to Professor Takisa.
Yes, please, okay. go ahead. Uh, thank you, Patrick. Uh, thank you for inviting me to this uh, uh, lunch on seminar. Actually, I was told to have my talk in English, not Japanese, this morning. Uh, but I'm ready to have my talk uh, in English today. Uh, the point which I prepared today is uh, uh, I, am not, I am not pessimistic on the future, Japan, future of Japan-North Korean relations. Japan DPRK relations uh, is changing, uh, and North Korea is changing domestically. And Mr. Kim Jong Un, leader of DPRK, uh, now is trying to internationalize uh, uh, his uh, uh, country. So Japan and North Korea reached agreement in May, and. Uh, I think Kim Jong-un uh, can do so because Kim Jong-un, leader of North Korea, he, uh, already grasped the power. There is no power struggle bit in, among uh, Korean leaders. No doves and hawks uh, in Pyongyang, or no, uh, 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 how you say, no, uh, no, no anti-government movement uh, among North Korean people. Uh, in spite of uh, the famous incident, uh, uh, the Chan Son Tek incident, and Kim Jong Un executed uh, Mr. Chan Son Tek, uh, uh, the uh, uh, deputy uh, uh, deputy chairman uh, uh, deputy chairman of the National Defense Committee of North Korea uh, last year. Kim Jong Un already grasped his power in North Korea, so uh, Kim Jong Un can. Uh, uh, can try to normalize, no, can try to improve the relations uh, with uh, Japan. But uh, however, uh, North Korea will not abandon nuclear weapons because uh, North Korean nuclear weapons is deeply related to its uh, unification policy. North when North Korea uh, uh, succeeds in developing uh, intercontinental ballistic missile, North Korea will say, don't move the United States. We have nukes, and we can destroy New York and Washington, DC with uh, in ICBMs. So North Korea will cross 38 parallel in future after the United States with the roads, the US forces from Korean Peninsula, and the US and the North Korea uh, reach and the uh, non-aggression treaty between Pyongyang and Washington and North Korea succeeds in uh, ICBMs. North Korea will cross 38 parallel uh, with uh, low technology uh, uh, conventional weapons. So militarily, I am not optimistic, but politically, I am not pessimistic on the future uh, of the Japan DPRK uh, relations. Uh, but ab uh, abduction issue is the issue between uh, DPRK and uh, Japan. China and uh, ROK uh, didn't support Japan's position on the abduction issue between North Korea and Japan. So in this sense, I support uh, Abe government's decision to lift uh, sanctions after two countries reached uh, the agreement uh, in uh, Stockholm and uh, uh, Beijing. So I, I, I have uh, 10 minutes more, I think. Uh, please, uh, yes, I prepared uh, the outline uh, for today's uh, uh, talk. And uh, please open the page one. The question now which uh, uh, was asked to me is, will Tokyo and Pyongyang be able to solve the abduction issue? Uh, yes, uh, senior officials from Japan and North Korea had uh, held talks in Beijing and on July 1st. And uh, Tuesday, uh, about the uh, uh, North's pledge to hold a full-scale investigation into Japanese uh, nationals uh, abducted to North Korea in the 1970s and the 80s, uh, as Martha's son uh, explained earlier. And Prime Minister 
Abe Shinzo announced that the Japanese government has decided to lift some of its unilateral sanctions on Pyongyang in return for North Korea setting up a committee to investigate the fate of Japanese abductees. And the North Korea agreed to organize, to establish a committee to investigate the fate of Japanese abductees. Also, North Korea decided to establish four panels, four panels, uh, as you see, page one and page two, uh, already uh, Maslow-san explained before. I think Maslow-san uh, talked everything, all of North Korean issues, so <laughs> uh, I, I think I need not to repeat uh, the, these issues. So please see uh, page one and page two on the, the four panels uh, which uh, are established uh, by the DPRK governments. And, uh, uh, the point is uh, page two, uh, number three. Is Pyongyang sincerely interested in uh, solving the issue? Uh, my answer is uh, yes or no, <laughs> because uh, uh, yes, it's very difficult to, uh, to say sincerity when we talk about North Korea, North Korea's action or North Korea's uh, measures. Uh, uh, so, but this time, I think uh, we can see North Korea's uh, decision to uh, start the investi investigation these issues uh, because uh, uh, I had a comment uh, to uh, Japan Times here, uh, July 3rd. One reason why Japan is uh, satisfied with the inquiry team is that it includes the Ministry of State Security a secret police department that uh, reports directly to Kim Jong-un. Uh, and uh, I said, the, uh, 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 described the ministry's uh, chief as Kim, uh, Kim's right hand. And since the deputy chief will be uh, heading the panel, uh, be, uh, be, uh, uh, he will bring it considerable power. Uh, number one of uh, the Ministry of State uh, Security is Kim Won Hon. Kim Won Hon is the right hand of Kim Jong Un, and uh, uh, chairman of uh, this uh, investigation committee is very close to number one of the Ministry of State Security. So, I think uh, chairman of. Uh, the investigation committee is very, very powerful, and he can talk directly to, with uh, uh, Mr. Kim Jong-un, leader of the DPRK. Uh, but uh, by contrast, a uh, unit Pyongyang set up in 2004 was led by a senior official of the Minister, Ministry of People's Security, a regular police uh, agency, which uh, lacked the authority needed to investigate every government department in the uh, secretive, uh, secretive uh, state. Uh, North Korean government explained in this way, uh, Ministry of uh, Police, uh, People's Security has no power, so I'm sorry uh, the North Korea uh, reported uh, uh, that uh, reported that document and they handed it to the Japanese government. They said, but this time the organization which investigates uh, is uh, uh, was organized uh, and it organized inside the Ministry of State uh, Security. So. Uh, my view is uh, unlike uh, its previous uh, uh, botched investigation, this time uh, I can see North Korea's uh, intention to conduct a serious investigation because the Deputy Chief of the Ministry of State Security chairs the committee. And uh, the uh, relaxation uh, omit North Korea's uh, main uh, demands, uh, such as port calls, by the Mangyom, Mangyom uh, 92 ferry and the use of the former de facto North Korean embassy in Tokyo. So I think Japan, uh, Japan's government keeps uh, uh, 
several, uh, let's say, uh, negotiation card with uh, North Korea. Uh, for example, Mangyongbong uh, port call and the status of North Korea, de facto North Korean embassy, also other uh, sanctions which you know, Japanese government did not lift this time. Uh, Pyongyang's ultimate goal is uh, normalization of Japan-North Korean uh, uh, diplomatic ties. Yes, I think so. The Mr. Uh, Song Il-ho, uh, uh, the head of North Korean uh, delegation, when Japan and DPRK held uh, talks in Beijing and in Stockholm, is, um, is uh, the ambassador of uh, Japan DPRK uh, normalization talks. So North Korea's uh, uh, goal is uh, normalize, normalization of Japan North Korea diplomatic ties. So North Korea needed to show sincerity to Japanese government in the process uh, to investigate uh, the abduction issues uh, because uh, the, with uh, this sincerity and with the confidence uh, building between Pyongyang and Tokyo, uh, Pyongyang uh, can reach the final goal. Uh, that means uh, the normalization uh, between Tokyo and Pyongyang. So I, I think Japan's government keeps a lot of uh, the uh, cars when Japan negotiates with North Korea. But in order to reach that, in, it needs to solve not only the abductions issues, but also North Korea's weapons programs, of course. I, yes. So I will uh, explain later this, one, this point. Now, uh, page th three, number four. Is North Korea changing? Yes. I have uh, several points. Uh, until last year, uh, the China's influence uh, on North Korea was overwhelming. But uh, after the Son Tech incident, December 12, last year, North Korea uh, started to improve the relations with Russia and Mongolia and other countries. North Korea held some uh, seminars in Pyongyang in May to uh, uh, encourage investments by foreign uh, companies to uh, North Korean economic special zone. And uh, North Korea is trying to internationalize uh, its, its country under the Kim Jong-un's leadership and established uh, the Ministry of Foreign Economic Relations uh, uh, last year, North Korea. And uh, North Korea uh, is ready to welcome the foreign investments. And also, North Korea is increasing the number of social economic zones since November 2013. And recently, it's very interesting, Kim Jong-un, Kim Jong leader of North Korea, uh, uses uh, this word, uh, speediness is important in Korean, Choson uh, Sokto in Japanese, Choson uh, speed, or Korean speed. Uh, and North Korea's policy of uh, speeding uh, along construction or work is very interesting. And also, uh, according to Nodon Shimbun, the Workers' Party of Korea's uh, organization paper used the speediness in diplomacy. And Kim Jong-un, leader of North Korea, uh, emphasize the speediness in diplomacy. Maybe it implies that uh, uh, North Korea need to uh, improve the relations uh, with Japan uh, quickly, maybe. And also, uh, now I think there is a question. Frequent leadership changes within the North Korean military. For example, uh, Che Ryong uh, uh, was uh, the most powerful uh, person inside the North Korean military. Now, Hwang, uh, Hwang, Byung, uh, Hwang Byung so is uh, the it was replaced. So, North Korea's uh, recent uh, frequent leadership changes uh, uh, is causing uh, some to question if the Kim Jong-un regime is uh, still unstable? No, I don't think so. 
Uh, my understanding is uh, the frequent leadership changes within the North Korean military means Kim Jong Un has grasped the all uh, the power already. So uh, Kim Jong Un can can uh, change the military and the Workers' Party of Korea quickly, uh, very quickly, and also can he can internationalize it. Uh, 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 country uh, very uh, quickly. So North Korean leader Kim Jong already has grasped the power. Uh, and also in addition, I think there are some criticism uh, on the uh, optimist, uh, optimist, optimistic views on uh, the future of Japan DPRK relations or Japan DPRK negotiations, uh, for example, there's no Workers' Party of Korean, Korea's uh, United Front Department inside uh, the, the committee uh, which was established uh, last week. Uh, so, but uh, the head of Workers' of, uh, uh, workers Party of Korea Head of Workers' Party of Korea is Kim Jong Un, leader of North Korea, and Kim Jong Un is also leader of National Defense Commission, and the National Defense Commission uh, grasps the uh, the com uh, committee which was established last week. So uh, always Kim Jong Un uh, as a leader of the Workers' Party of Korea. Uh, Kim Jong can say, uh, please hand out uh, every document uh, to um, United Front Department in uh, Workers' Party of Korea. So I think we, I, I, I am optimistic on, in, on this point. Also, order of different panels uh, uh, is different, some expert uh, says. Uh, four panels uh, which uh, are established uh, uh, last week by North Korean government. Song Ilfo, uh, the head of uh, the North Korean delegation, explained uh, there are four panels. Number one is, uh, he said, uh, number one, the first uh, panels, panel is uh, the panel to investigate the remains of Japanese uh, Nationals uh, and the abdu uh, the investigate the abductees. Uh, it was the last, according to the explanation by Ambassador Song Ilho. But on the other hand, the Japanese government explained the first panel is investigation uh, on abductees, and the last one it was uh, the investigate. The, organ the panel to investigate the remains of Japanese uh, nationals. But this order is not so important because when Japan and North Korea reached the agreement in 2002, September 2002, when Prime Minister Koizumi visited Pyongyang, Japan uh, reported, the Japanese government uh, uh, reported that uh, Japan reached Japan DPRK Pyongyang Declaration, but North Korean government uh, said uh, North Korea reached DPRK Japan Declaration. That's it. Okay, so uh, last point is uh, uh, some uh, experts said uh, Oh, Japan uh, very much unilaterally reached the agreement between Pyongyang and uh, Tokyo. Where is uh, the role of six-party talks? Where is the cooperation or coordination among three countries? Uh, uh, last night, uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs Kishida-san uh, gave a phone call directly to uh, Secretary of State of the United States to uh, let us uh, uh, encourage uh, to uh, cooperate uh, among three countries, the Republic of Korea, the United States, and Japan. Uh, yes, it's very important, but uh, please, uh, uh, please, uh, uh, I would like to uh, remind this. The Japan-North Korean normalization talk working group 
is one of the five working groups inside the six party talks. So now Japan and North Korea are ready to talk with each other on the abduction issues. So Korea, the US, and Russia, and China need to say, oh, we need to rush to uh, resume a six party talks because uh, one of the five working groups now started. So I do not uh, pessimistic on the issue, the cooperation or coordination among six countries after Japan DPRK uh, talks. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Takisato Sensei. Well, we go straight into questions. If you have a question, raise your hand. Please come up here to the microphone, uh, mention your name and affiliation. And uh, if the question is addressed to one of our uh, speakers, please say to whom. Um, Isabel, first. Isabel Reynolds from Bloomberg News. Um, thanks very much for your talks. Um, I just want to go back to, again to the title of the event today. Um, Abe, Prime Minister Abe has said that he won't rest until all the families of the abductees can embrace their relatives. Um, if there are 860 people, hasn't he set himself an impossible task? So surely this will never be resolved. Um, and I have a second, slightly more trivial question. Do you see any significance to the fact that uh, North Korea is sending its first cheerleader party in 10 years um, to South Korea shortly? Go first. Yeah. I may, may I take you up on the on the first question? Will this ever be resolved? Um, well, it's a yes or no question. Uh, I would say no. But as I've said at the end of my of my short briefing, the the board is certainly in 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 the Japan side of the pitch. I mean, it's up to Abe to find a response, a way of communicating whatever whatever comes out of the investigations, um, and to to control um, public opinion in the way that somehow improves the mishandled public communication strategy in 2002, where some was left wondering, why haven't they considered a strategy that has accounted for a possible scenario that more are dead than are alive uh, in a North Korean uh, report? So, well, I don't know whether the, 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 the Ministry of Foreign Affairs um, planners and people responsible for the current talks have such a scenario. I, I hope they do. Uh, and I only hope that um, Japan and Abe finds a way to communicate a result. And I would, I would suggest, though, um, which makes me uh, more optimistic on, on this side, is that Abe is certainly the only person um, in the last decade who is, whatever the result may be, who can communicate and who can control public outrage even if the results are negative, because he is the one who has run on the, on the platform of the abduction lobby, who has uh, the closest ties to the abduction lobby, and who could certainly convince them uh, to um, accept, accept results if those results are considered sincere, honest, transparent, well, transparent as much as we can hope um, from a North Korean perspective, uh, transparent and therefore acceptable for Japan. So, um, I think this is the only solution to the issue, and I would be rather optimistic that Abe is the man, uh, the person who may be most feasible of communicating such a result. I don't take you up on the second question, as I don't have a good answer for that. Okay, uh, I think there's no end of the solution of the abduction issue. Uh, who knows how many Japanese, uh, how many Japanese abductees in North Korea, who knows? Uh, um, Prime Minister Abe also does not know how many abductees in North Korea. So I think uh, the Japan DPRK uh, talks on uh, the abduction issues uh, uh, will continue forever, I think, forever. Because, so, because North Korea also cannot uh, investigate uh, uh, all of abductees in detail, maybe. So and or, or, uh, and so my I think uh, Japan. Uh, this is my view. Japan is uh, Japan 
At first, uh, to ask North Korea to return uh, 12 Jap Japanese abductees, which are confirmed by Japanese government officially at first, and among them, five, at least three or four or five abductees are ready to return Japan. Mr. Prime Minister uh, Abe-san uh, should go to Pyongyang uh, <coughs> to support them uh, when they return. Maybe when, I don't know, in September or October, but uh, my view is there's no end, no end of solution of abduction issue. But uh, uh, parallelly, we sh need to start the normalization talks with North Korea. Uh, even if, uh, even if uh, no, uh, the abduction issue does not uh, uh, does not end, so. And the second question is uh, your question is uh, uh, North Korean the cheerleaders. Yes, uh, yesterday North Korea asked uh, ROK government whether North Korea can send the cheerleaders to Incheon Asian uh, Games. And uh, on the same day, the National uh, Ministry of Unification of ROK uh, decided uh, to accept cheerleaders from North Korea. Uh, I think North Korea's, uh, this is uh, one of the North Korea's uh, uh, negotiation tactics uh, because uh, uh, no, for North Korean eyes, uh, ROK uh, is rushing to talk with uh, North Korea after Japan DPRK talks. Uh, I know the ROK television news uh, said, uh, oh, Japan and the DPRK relations uh, is improving. So uh, it, uh, the uh, improvement uh, uh, between the Pyong improvement of the relations between Pyongyang and the Seoul is becoming uh, uh, more difficult because of the improvement of DPRK Japan relations. Uh, I was surprised to see this uh, ROK in television news. But anyway, no, uh, Republic of Korea is very much rushing to improve the relations uh, uh, after they witnessed uh, their improvement. Uh, in Japan DPRK relations. Uh, North Korea knows the heart of uh, Park Kune, President Park Kune. So they proposed to send the cheerleaders. And maybe next time, they, if, within a week or two weeks, North Korea would say, please make a concession when Park Kune government would like to talk with North Korea. And uh, so. Uh, this is uh, uh, the part of North Korean very, very tactical negotiation uh, tactics uh, when they talk with the Park Geun-hye government. Anthony? <clears throat> Anthony Rowley, Singapore Business Times. <clears throat> Excuse me. Two questions, if I may, addressed to whichever of you gentlemen prefers to answer. First, it's a simple question, I suppose. Um, how easy is it going to be, or difficult for North Korea to admit that it may have many abductees after all? I mean, there's a loss of face involved, you know. They've said all these years we have only a few. If they suddenly have to say, well, sorry, we were wrong, we, or we were hiding the truth. Is that going to be a, an impediment to um, reaching agreement, do you think? And the second point is, um, if Japan lifts sanctions on trade with North Korea, that's useful for North Korea, but really North Korea wants finance, um, particularly for infrastructure building. And presumably until the nuclear issue is solved, they won't be able to join the IMF and the World Bank or the Asian Development Bank. So do you have any indication that Japan might be prepared to offer finance, particularly for infrastructure, say through the Japan Bank for International Cooperation? Is there any suggestion of this in the wind, do you think? Thank you very much um, for this uh, interesting questions indeed. Um, so will, will Japan, well, what, what's, 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 what's kind of holding back North Korea, will this admission be a setback? Can they actually admit? Well, I'm not an expert on what's happening within North Korea, really. I'm more an expert of what Japan's policy towards North Korea is. But 
Um, I would say that one of the reasons that actually Kim Jong-un uh, is engaging in these talks is I think he's using it also as a policy field to indicate that he is uh, somehow developing an autonomous and independent foreign policy approach different from what his father has done. And this is actually something that um, has led to some hope in 2011 with the emergence of the Kim Jong-un regime, is that we have a leader in North Korea um, who has not been involved in the abductions, uh, at the end it was his father uh, who did so, um, and he can use this issue to um, create and um, a profile that he is actually uh, in charge of his own foreign policy agenda. So in that sense, it might actually help him to further consolidate his grip on power uh, than, uh, than it is a, 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 a kind of a phase, a loss of phase. So I would kind of twist your question there a bit and uh, say it might actually help uh, him uh, to consolidate and also to kind of scrutinize the, 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 the organization of power that his father and grandfather has set up. At the end, this new investigation commission has a very powerful mandate to investigate across all institutions. So this may actually help him also to get an idea of what he's actually in charge of at the end of the day. So this may also be a very helpful tool for him to consolidate his power. So this is um, my answer to your first question. The second one would be, um, well, indeed, uh, the, the, the lifting of sanctions that we have seen so far um, is not very um, um, extensive. And this is also Japan's response to, to Washington and so on, saying, well, we're actually not uh, deviating from, from the general uh, policy line towards North Korea, since we are only looking at unilateral sanctions that aren't very, uh, um, you know, um, that do not create a certain disproportionate benefit for North Korea in terms of its economic impact. So I think it might be much more difficult for Japan to communicate its foreign policy than if it lifts, for instance, the, the current total ban of all imports and exports towards North Korea. This is something that's been, uh, there would be actually a significant, a significant uh, change in, in policy. Is Japan prepared to do so at the moment? I don't think so, because this would necessitate further dialogue with Washington and Seoul. And this will also affect uh, sanctions that are included in the multilateral sanctions, sanctions regime. And this uh, requires different, different, uh, um, a different approach that includes Seoul and Washington at, at the end of the day. Um, but to add to this, um, which I haven't mentioned in, in the briefing, we also ask what's actually the, the, the effect of the Japan sanctions on North Korea in the first place. Well, um, I'm not a sanctions expert per se, I'm not an economist, but uh, there have been reports um, that indicate that Japan's sanctions, well, uh, the impact of the sanctions were actually quite marginal. If you consider that Japan's trade with North Korea in 2001, Japan's share, uh, or the, sh the share of Japan's trade uh, for North Korea in 2001 was at 17.8%. In 2005, that is the year before the sanctions kicked in, uh, trade already dropped to 4.8%. So, you can actually see that, you know, against this background, Japan's sanctions regime um, is not so much of an economic, um, you know, tool than it is more of a symbolic um, uh, factor. And Japan's sanctions regime, as the, the multilateral UN-led sanction regimes, are also um, somehow, um, are in a sense, relativized by, of course, China's trade relation with North Korea that... Uh, occupy more than 89% of, of North Korea's total trade. So either way, Japan's unilateral sanctions, multilateral sanctions, and their impact on North Korea are rather limited. Uh, so in that sense, um, this may also add, doesn't answer directly a question, but it gives you a, a bit of a, the idea that I'd be rather skeptical that a lifting of total trade bans sets in uh, before any significant solution of the abduction issue occurs. The Japanese government last, last week uh, decided the, the, to lift uh, uh, the sanctions of three items. But this uh, uh, lifting uh, uh, three items is very, very uh, limited one. This is, uh, I think this means just a symbolic uh, uh, measures uh, between uh, uh, North Korean uh, government and uh, Puro North Korean group in Japan. Uh, send, uh, the limitation of uh, uh, sending money and also the port call of North Korean uh, uh, ships. And I think with this uh, uh, lift uh, of uh, sanctions, uh, Japan can get 
uh, something because uh, when North Korean uh, ship uh, comes to Niigata port, uh, Japanese government police agency will investigate in detail and if there are some illegal activities uh, related to the ship, uh, 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 the role of a ship, or also who send money from Tokyo to Pyongyang, and who comes from Pyongyang to Tokyo, all of the things uh, Japan can know. So there are um, a lot of uh, uh, informations and the intelligences uh, Japanese government can get. So I think with this, uh, 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 three items which uh, were lifted by Japanese government. Japanese uh, government can get uh, uh, many things, I think, I believe. And uh, what? That's it. Financial aid. Financial aid? No, no. Mm. No, I don't think so. According to the September 2002 uh, Japan-North uh, uh, Korea Pyongyang Declaration, after normalization, Japan will uh, have economic uh, uh, aid to North Korea after the normalization, after the end of the abduction issue. No, no. After the normalization, after normalization uh, between Pyongyang and Tokyo. Koske, please. Uh, thank you so much, Takeda Sensei and Sebastian. Uh, my name is Koske Takashi uh, from the Gen's Defense Weekly. Uh, I also write for uh, NK News. Uh, my question is Takeda san. Uh, I have a, my, my journalist friend and me divided about the Kim Jong Il's character. Is Kim Jong Il uh, Kim Jong Un is pro Japan. Uh, you know, the, his mother was born and raised in Ikuno district of Osaka, and uh, I heard Kim Jong Un learned Japanese, and also um, Kim Jong Un's childhood uh, friend uh, Kenji Fujimoto. He taught many Japanese, you know, playing uh, asobi uh, to Kim Jong Un. So I think Kim Jong Un is very pro-Japanese, and then he's accelerating the, improving the tie towards the, you know, the solving the abduction issue, et cetera. What, what do you think about the Kim Jong's character? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Takahashi-san, my good friend. Uh, yes, uh, there is no pro-Japan Korean on the Korean Peninsula. No pro-Japan Koreans, but uh, Kim Jong-un, uh, I think, likes Japanese culture uh, because uh, uh, he, uh, according to Fujimoto Kenji-san's uh, <laughs> very famous book, he enjoyed the Japanese toy uh, every year in January. Oh, Japanese people in, uh, invented this toy. Oh, it's amazing, he said to Fujimoto Kenji-san. He enjoyed the Japanese toy and also uh, he likes uh, in uh, Universal Studio in uh, Osaka and uh, also Disneyland in Tokyo. He is very interested in uh, the like uh, these uh, uh, facilities. So uh, I think there is uh, no um, bias uh, on the Japanese culture or Japanese thinking style. Maybe I think uh, uh, comparing to President uh, Park Kune, maybe Kim Jong un likes Japanese culture, I think. <laughs> Other questions? Please. Uh, Takashi Kuyama, freelance. You mentioned three or five abductees may return to Japan. Would uh, Yokota Megumi san be included? Um, 
I would be very cautious of speculating whoever is on the list uh, because I don't want to be at the end to be blamed if I've said that this and this person comes back and the other kind doesn't come back. So it's, it's pure speculation. We've all also heard uh, that um, uh, at the recent meeting in Beijing, um, the North Korean side has handed uh, to the Japanese a list that includes 10 names of uh, possible abductees who might return. This has quickly been um, renounced by Suga that this is not true. Uh, there is no such list. We don't know who's coming back. I mean, the Japanese weekly media, the weekly magazines have speculated about five people that may include Arimoto Keiko, uh, that may include other abductees, but at the end of the day, we just don't know. Uh, as I don't know uh, what the investigations, or which state the investigations is, uh, and who might return. So I won't be uh, the culprit who's saying this and this person comes back, and at the end, I'm possibly wrong. So you won't get any names from me, as I don't know. But does Megumi Yokota have a special role in this? After all, she's sort of an icon. Uh, she's the face of the abduction issue. Is any solution of this issue possible without really convincing answers on her fate? Um, my answer to that question is certainly yes. And I think the Japanese government has made a very smart move in March of uh, trying to um, incorporate the Yokota family in their approach of um, engaging North Korea, which is something that wasn't the case uh, in the years before. In fact, the Yokota family were split uh, in the past between engagement and containment, as uh, the mother, uh, Saki Yokota, uh, uh, was, was very uh, close to the school guideline of uh, containing North Korea. Do not talk before any promise uh, of investigation comes. Do not engage in dialogue rest. The father was, uh, she had a son, was uh, very much in favor throughout the, the, the later years of, of, in fact, dialogue. Uh, time is running out, and they're not getting any younger. Uh, in fact, the entire movement uh, witnesses demographic change to its, to its negative effect. So uh, they're losing time, so therefore, um, there is pressure for, for dialogue, and the, the Japanese side has uh, correctly recognized that the Yokota family, of course, is the most, has a very high symbolic value for the entire movement. So they can, can be convinced of, of, uh, of dialogue, um, and the, the, the need for dialogue, I think the movement as such, and I might be criticized for that, um, may lose its importance, uh, its role. And I think one of the reasons that the Japanese government could uh, move forward and push for more, for, more, for more talks is that it has actually engaged and incorporated the Yokotas in March and setting up a meeting with their granddaughter, which is something that the North Koreans, by the way, have also uh, rejected. Uh, no such meeting was allowed uh, uh, only for the precondition that the Yokotas travel to Pyongyang. So it was also a move forward by Pyongyang to, to uh, allow for a meeting to take place outside of North Korea. So this is also a sign of confidence, and this is also a sign that the North Koreans do know the value, the symbolic value of the Yokota family and their uh, uh, beloved daughter, uh, Megumi. So I think there's also a hope that the Japanese government has recognized that and uh, pushes forward to, to use uh, and to somehow moderate the influence of the movement on that side as well. I'd like to ask something here to takesada san as, as you've worked and lived in South Korea, um, there's also dozens if not hundreds of South Koreans who were likely abducted to the north, but there's no such person like a Megumi Yokota, there's no icon, actually, they're actually almost invisible in South Korea. How is this different? Here in Japan it's such a big issue. Um, and in South Korea, one basically does not talk about the abduction issue. Uh, yes, uh, there are a lot of abductees in ROK during the Korean War and immediately after the end of war. So I think uh, the some uh, several hundreds of abductees uh, uh, after the Korean War are not so serious issue for ROK people. I think, and also Japanese government supported the, the abduction, uh, the sort of, to solve the abduction issue, but the ROK government uh, uh, was not active to support uh, uh, abduction issue, uh, abduction issue uh, domestically. So that is the difference between Japan and uh, ROK case. And in addition, 
one, one thing. Uh, so, yes, uh, four or five abductees may return Japan or not. Uh, that was uh, the question. But I don't like this uh, speculation because uh, uh, Yokota Megumi-san's uh, mother and father are waiting uh, his daughter's return, and also Arimoto-san's and Masumoto-san's relatives are waiting uh, for returning uh, 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 Japan uh, who are uh, returning uh, their uh, relatives, uh, their daughter or their <coughs> their their sister. So uh, I think we need uh, we should not say uh, five or uh, uh, six uh, uh, abductees may return uh, Japan. And in addition, recently three informations we got. One is. Uh, Yokota Megumi-san's daughter may return in September or November, in, may return Tokyo. Some, uh, someone said, uh, Yokota, uh, so Ungyon-san. Ungyon-san uh, met uh, Yokota Megumi-san's father and uh, uh, mother in Ulan Bator uh, this year, uh, last year. But uh, uh, yes, and uh, that, uh, that was the rumor, Ungyon san may return to Tokyo this uh, autumn. And another information is uh, two visit uh, abductees uh, were uh, listed, were informed to Japanese government directly from by the North Korean government. And uh, Japanese government already got the list of the name who can return to Japan. But, it, but that is just a rumor. So my speculation is uh, some group or some government intentionally uh, handed out this information. Japanese government knows the list of the abductees who are returning to Japan, but uh, Japanese government uh, did not explain the name list for Japanese people. So I think uh, Japan DPRK negotiation is uh, nonsense. Please stop Japan North Korean uh, talks. Please stop Japan North Korean uh, talks. Someone or some government would like to say so. So intentionally, they you, they are using this disinformation tactics to say, oh, Yokota Megumi-san's daughter is returning to Japan, or some abduction, abductee's list was handed over by Jap uh, to Japanese government. But there is no basis, uh, no information on, uh, on this issue. Good questions. Uh, Secret hasn't asked a question yet. Siegfried Needle Freelancer from Germany. Um, Japan and uh, North Korea sometimes um, had talks in Beijing about uh, this case. Uh, but I think, uh, is, can the Ch Chinese government, is they happy with this kind of negotiations? If um, China understands itself as a hegemon of, of North Korea, if North Korea wants to talk with, uh, with uh, Japan, perhaps more in the direction of normalization of uh, relations. It means to weaken its de dependence from, it wants to, de to weaken its dependence from, from China. Can China be interested in this? I think it's, yes. yeah. Uh, thank, thank you very much. Spokesman of the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs said uh, uh, they are positive uh, to the uh, con uh, to the uh, agreement between Pyongyang and uh, uh, Japan last week, I think. Uh, officially, they said, yes, uh, that is true. They said uh, what they thought, I think, because uh, with this uh, agreement between Pyongyang and Tokyo, China uh, can resume the restart of six-party talks. Uh, six-party talks is uh, the 
uh, uh, conference uh, which had been hosted by Chinese government and the chairman always uh, was a Chinese uh, uh, diplomat. So China is, wel is welcoming the result of the Japan DPRK talks. And China uh, got uh, many things with this uh, uh, Japan DPRK uh, uh, relations, uh, I think. And the Chinese policy toward the Korean Peninsula is very much strategic and uh, tactical. China has uh, good relations with the Park uh, uh, regime and North Korea. North Korea-China relations is alliance uh, uh, after, uh, after the <coughs> agreement of the 1961 uh, treaty between Pyongyang and Beijing. And some newspaper in Japan uh, reported China stopped uh, sending crude oil from China to North Korea. No, this, is, this was uh, disinformation. There are, are two routes when China sends uh, uh, crude oil to North Korea. One is uh, a secret uh, uh, crude oil pipeline from China to North Korea near Tandon City, near Shingumiju City. This is a secret. Who knows the number? of the crude oil uh, e export. The, the amount of uh, Chinese crude oil export to uh, North Korea, which has been listed in uh, the document by, of the Chinese uh, government, uh, is the crude oil which has been uh, exported from uh, Dalian City to Nampo City with a small tanker ship. So China uh, did, not, uh, uh, did not show the number of this amount uh, crude oil, of crude oil from Darien City to Nampo from January to April. That's it. But Chinese uh, government did not write zero. No. Just uh, how do you say? Uh, they wrote dash. So there is no evidence that China stopped the, uh, the ex uh, crude oil export from China to North Korea. That is uh, misinformation by, uh, by uh, ROK, uh, UNAP News, and some newspapers of Japan. OK, Christoph. Süddeutsche Zeitung, Germany, Neidhardt. Professor uh, Takesada, you seem to be firm, uh, sure that uh, uh, Kim Jong-un is firmly in control. Now, Chang Jing-sung in uh, uh, South Korea is uh, sure that uh, Kim Jong-un is only a, a puppet figure of the uh, Bureau of uh, the Office of Organiza Organizational uh, uh, guidance of the party, so he is not in power at all, as was his grandfather in the last few years of his life. Thank you very much. I don't think so. I don't think that Kim Jong Un is a puppet of uh, of the, some groups, including maybe the puppet of the uh, uh, ROK military or Workers Party of Korean uh, Workers Party of Korea. No, I don't think so. Uh, because uh, uh, look at the photos which are uh, released by uh, uh, DPRK government. Uh, Kim Jong Un's uh, wife, uh, her name is Lee Soju. Recently, Lee Soju uh, does not wear the Kim Il Sung, Kim Jong Il badge, even when. Kim Jong Un and the soldier appeared uh, two years anniversary, two years uh, after Kim Jong Il's death last year. Uh, Kim Ri Soju, wife of Kim Jong Un, did not wear Kim Il Sung, Kim Jong Il badge. That is a very, much, very, very important uh, uh, ceremony in North Korea. Uh, behind Kim Jong-un and the soldier, there are a lot of uh, 
uh, VIPs from uh, Co Workers' Party of Korea and uh, Korean People's uh, uh, Military uh, in December, after two years uh, uh, of the Kim Jong Il's death. Oh, this soldier did not wear the Kim Il Sung, Kim Jong Il's but, uh, badge. This means that uh, uh, whether this soldier should wear Kim Il Sung and Kim Jong Il badge, uh, only Kim Jong Un and the soldier decide this. This means he is not the puppet. Yes, please. Just want to make sure that I understand the, num the, quid the numbers of abductees. Um, I think you said that the Japanese government recognizes as, def as more or less definite abductees, quite a small number, but there may be 800 or, or so. It's an enormous discrepancy. I mean, who are these other 780 people or so? Yeah, um, so you're absolutely correct. The, the official number that has been confirmed is 17. And investigations by the National Police Agency has a list of 860, of which we do not know by 100% that those are related to North Korea, but we would wish the North Korean government to look at least into it. Um, so these are not 100% assured cases, but only where suspicion exists that they might have been abducted. So if the investigation, and this is something I'd be looking forward to see how this is going to be explained, the investigation says, well, sorry, but on, the, on your list, we couldn't, we couldn't find any of those to be in North Korea. Um, then the Japanese government and police has to you know, open cases uh, and, and investigate otherwise. Um, let me say this. Um, Abe and Associates have um, also used the North Korean case um, and the abductions to criticize um, Japan's national police and the work of those in the past. Um, it has always been a very convenient case for um, officials to say, well, these people have been abducted, and so we don't have to look into these cases in, in Japan. So. Um, this adds to it. I mean, the Japanese police and their work you know, haven't been a sign of excellence uh, over the last decade. So, uh, you know, these people have to explain also a lot what happened to these people. They have to reopen cases of people who went missing, uh, which they didn't, uh, and uh, they should. Uh, so, um, but I, I don't know how this, is gonna be, how this will be explained. I mean, if the North Koreans say, well, on your list, we have 860 people, um, they're actually proceeding now. I mean, they're asking the families if, if we can put your name on the list. And as far as I know uh, by now, the, the, the list that includes profile pictures of those abducted, uh, and of which the family have agreed to publish those, those information, includes now 407, 407 people, I think it is. I'm not quite sure about the number exactly, but I think it's 407 that the NPA, the National Police Agency, has now publicly on the list. Uh, and those are, are running under the under the under the banner of um, believed to be abducted. But they're not abducted, but missing people at the end. They're not they're not abducted, but missing. So that's, that's a huge so difference. Uh, how do you become a Well. The, the, the cases, I mean, we know that the, the, the um, eight people who have been declared dead, I mean, those are definitely on the list. Um, then the five who have been returned, um, they're off the list, but they're still being abducted. And then there are cases um, of, I think, four people, or five, of which Japan said they have entered North Korea by sure, we know that, by some information or the other, but North Korea uh, denies this allegation of that these people have entered North Korea. Um, but those, and the Japanese believes they have information that they've entered North Korea, uh, have been the basis for the definition of being mm. abducted. And all the other cases are based on vague information, uh, and therefore they're not abducted, but missed, missing people, possibly related to North Korea. That's the, 
the charming of, of those cases. Uh, yes, uh, 800, 860 is the maximum number. Uh, and uh, uh, no one said 860 Japanese uh, are abductees. No, no one. And the Professor uh, Araki-san, he's a, a leader of uh, the supporting uh, group on abduction issue. He's a professor at uh, Takshuk University, the same university. And I asked him, uh, how did you calculate, or how, how did you reach this number, 860? He said, oh, this is just the maximum number, he said. And two or three years ago, uh, police agency uh, found that some uh, remains uh, from uh, the uh, scrapped uh, ship near Niigata or Toyama or Kanazawa. Uh, and police agency confirmed uh, this, uh, this fisherman uh, was died uh, accident, uh, but with, in, in accident, mm. accident. And, but his name was uh, uh, on the list of uh, 860. So I think uh, after the Japan and uh, DPRK uh, collaborated to confirm the Japanese abductees from now on, that this number may be decreased, I think. Um, when Koizumi went to Pyongyang in 2002 and um, Kim Jong-il um, acknowledged that uh, a number of Japanese had been abducted. Probably North Koreans hoped that the relations would get better with Japan, but the opposite happened. It was a huge backlash. Do we have this risk again this time, or can we rule that out? Who wants to take the question? Sure. Uh, before I answer the question, I think I have to also correct myself. I think in my briefing I said it's the 20th anniversary of uh, the death of Kim Jong-il. Of course, it's Kim Il-sung, just that you got the, the names straight, uh, which is basically the events are taking place today. So uh, just to add that, um, that I'm on the record for that. Um, does this risk exist? Of course it does. Um, and I only hope that those people in charge of the current round of talks have a strategy to avoid this public backlash to occur a second time this time around. I think I'm quite confident that they do. And one of the reasons is, again, that uh, Abe is the person who is probably uh, most feasible of controlling any sort of backlash that may um, come from the abduction lobby. That means these groups that evolved over the abduction cases. Um, but in any case, um, the risks evolved for Abe in the current round of talks are very calibrated. If those investigations do not produce any results, well, he can always return to his hardline course. That may also push his public support in Japan, that he's always been coherent on that. If the investigations produce a positive outcome, this will also increase his public support. So in either case, in either direction, those investigations may go. Uh, for Abe, the outcome will possibly be very positive. So in that case, the, the current agenda of Japan's North Korea foreign diplomacy is a very calibrated and calculated risk for Abe. And certainly for him, it's a win-win situation that he may actually push his public support in, in either way. So that's, that's my answer to that. Uh, backlash or the impacts or influence by the North Korean report on abduction issues uh, uh, depends upon the content of the report by DPRK in August or in uh, September. I think if uh, North Korea uh, handed out uh, uh, the, how do you say, uh, how the, the same kind of uh, uh, report or statement uh, by North Korean government to Abe government, uh, uh, there is no abductees in North Korea after North Korea investigated. No, uh, will Japanese government and the Japanese people uh, will, will decide to impose uh, uh, more strict uh, sanctions against North Korea. So, but uh, this time, I think, as I said earlier, North Korea is uh, changing and North Korea is trying to uh, open up and uh, uh, 
open up its uh, society and to in, uh, trying to encourage the foreign investment to reconstruct their economy, this time under strong Kim Jong-un's uh, leadership. So I think uh, North Korea will uh, hand, uh, hand out the uh, sincere uh, report uh, in August, in September. Before that, the Japan and DPRK governments uh, will talk about this issue uh, uh, in uh, between uh, the Japan's embassy in Beijing and the Korea uh, um, DPRK embassy in Beijing. So, by doing so, I think this time the results of the investigation were different from that uh, in the past. Well, we've run out of time. Thank you both very, very much for coming and uh, giving us this insight. And as a little uh, sign of thank you for coming, we both, we'd like to present you both a one-year honorary membership to the FCCJ. Please come back very often during that year and hopefully also afterwards. Thank you very much and thank you very much, everybody very much for coming. Thank you.